Money, 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 money. Loot, 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 loot. And not a single ship on the horizon. Is this just a pleasant dream? Not at all, my gold seeking friend. This is just a wonderful world of the sea forts. One of the most convenient, relaxed, and in my opinion, therefore the best. Gold farm, aka money makers in the Sea of Thieves. It can help you level up any faction in the game, except for Athena's fortune. So in other words, all the good factions. Oof. You see how burnt he got there? Yeah, you heard me, Pirate Lord. It's not about the gold. <laughs> Do you see any glory making videos out there? Yeah, that's what I thought. And just take a look at this poll, man. I mean, yeah, Grog won pretty big, but gold trumps glory, that much is clear. Hmm, Grog videos. Yeah. I think we're onto something here. You can walk towards getting access to both hideouts by only doing sea forts, which is extremely nice. And you can skip lower level voyages, which would otherwise take a very long time to grind, as they give significantly worse loot than top tier voyages, unlocked at high levels. And I mean, any way of avoiding those pesky castaway chests is worth its weight in gold, trust me. Oh hell no, get that away from me. Get it away from me. Get it away from me! Ah! So what you want to do is get your ship, Head to... Uh, now let's see here. No. No. Definitely no. Oh yes. Here we go. Head to Ancient Gold and Old Brinestone Fortress. These are the two closest sea forts to one another, which we will take full advantage of. You can raise an emissary of your choosing, or loot without any emissary, and raise it when you wish to sell. If you loot enough forts, you can get to grade 5 in mere minutes once you bring the treasure onto your ship. Just note that this will require looting a lot of forts. Once you arrive at one of the forts, steer your ship in the direction of the other fort, put your sails at slightly less than halfway down, and jump off to take the first fort. Here you will be greeted by the most kind and welcoming people in all of Sea of Thieves. Oh wait, no. They want to murder you, no questions asked. You know, it's kind of how I imagine a random farm in Alabama to react. If you set one single foot on a farmland. I mean, I've never been, so I don't know, but you know, memes. So what you want to do is vanquish all Alabama- I mean, sorry, ghosts. Which will spawn in waves of 3 to 5. Each time a new wave spawns, the bell will ring. They can spawn on any floor of the fort, in between waves or when you can't find a current wave. You should search the fort for a key, which opens up the storage room on the top of the fort, which always contains two chests of the damned, one firework crate and one gem of any color. The key can spawn on all floors except the lowest one, but the majority of the time it spawns somewhere in the sleeping quarters on the second top floor. Once you find it, bring the four pieces of loot just out of the room and go make hunting the ghost your full-time job from now on. I mean, one single fort can pay over 40,000. Pretty damn good for six minutes of work. If this was a real-world job, I think most people would be fighting each other to apply. Well, unless we're talking about a currency like a Vietnamese dong or something. In which case, maybe not. Now you also have a room which is imbued with a ghost repellent spell of some sort, because they can't get in here. They can still shoot at you though. Also, a second place the ghost can't go through is this gate by the main loot room. Even if it's open, the ghost will always go around if you pass through. It will take around 6 minutes to both clear the fort and put all the loot outside the loot rooms, after which you return to your ship, which will be close to the next fort if you did it all right. I did not do it correctly and got way out of course as you can see. This is because when you travel northwest from Brinestone to Ancient Gold Fortress, you must turn the helm slightly to the right to counter waves pushing you in the wrong direction. The slower your ship is traveling, the less countering you will need. When you travel in the opposite direction, however, southeast from Ancient Gold, to old Brinestone Fortress, you can keep the helm completely straight no matter the speed, as the waves do not push you off course when traveling southeast. Now, another chunk of information you need to know is how the forts respawn. So after you take a fort, it will take around 12 minutes for it to respawn with new loot and new ghosts. These 12 minutes, however, will only start ticking down once all players are at a certain distance away from the fort. How far away? I don't fully know, but just to be safe, stay at the very least one whole tile away. This is a big reason why we wish to send our ships away, as the timer will start immediately as we take the mermaid, instead of starting once we've sailed far enough away. But note that our ship itself does not disrupt the timer, as the forts will respawn 
if we are on the ferry of the damned, while our ship chills out right outside the fort of our desire. So when we return to our ship, after taking the first fort, the 12 minute timer for it to respawn will start ticking. If you are a complete mastermind, your ship will be right by the next fort, and after the around 6 minutes it will take to clear that, there will be 6 minutes left until the first fort respawns. You can take note of how far your ship got to the second fort, to determine whether or not you need to have less or more sail to get the wanted results. Once you're on your ship again, the respawn timers for both forts will be ticking, and you can take a well the third break until the first fort respawns. After 6 minutes you head to the first fort you took and send your ship towards the second fort again. Every time you send your ship towards the second fort you can send it all the way as there will be 6 minutes or less left on the respawn timer by the time you reach the respawn first fort. So by the time you clear the first fort again the second should be respawned. So in other words you only need to not send it all the way and wait every time you're heading towards the first fort. Repeat this until you don't feel like it anymore at which point it is time for selling. If you're doing this as a reaper, which is the easiest way to do this moneymaker, there is a big chance you'll get attacked. But you will have no loot on your ship until you decide to go and sell. So as long as your attackers don't check the fort, you can sneak back and take it even if you lose. But I'm gonna tell you something that a lot of people don't like to hear. Come closer, because I'm not gonna say this loud. Closer. You can loot without an emissary. A bit it up later when you wish to go and sell. The only downside is that you will need to clear far more forts to reach the highest emissary tier this way than if you put it up straight away. This is because you get most of the progress to the next emissary tier when you touch the loot for the very first time. Is it only I who think that sound a bit dirty for some reason? Anyway, problem is that you will need to get the loot out of the room they spawn in, since that room respawns every time you go to clear the fort. So you will therefore waste most of the progress you would otherwise have gotten if you don't have any emissary. You do however also get a little progress when you bring it to your ship for the first time. And since we're storing all loot on the forts until we wish to sell, you can, with enough loot, still reach the highest tier that way. This will drastically reduce the chance of getting attacked, as it will not take too long to grab all the loot and make a run for Reaper's hideout. If you make it, your brethren will be proud of you. If you're selling as the other emissaries however, there is something we need to do before we sell. To get maximum profit out of this, we need to sort the loot into three piles. In one pile, we'll have all the merchant loot, which will be all the crates. Note that the firework crates will not level up your emissary, but they will have the emissary multiplier once selling. I also like to put the gems in this pile, as you get way more gold hoarder and or souls loot from the force. So any uh, assistance in leveling up the merchant Lion's flag is very welcome. In the second pile we'll put all the gold hoarder loot, which will be the chests and shiny trinkets. In the third and final pile we'll put all the skulls for the order of souls. If you loot it without an emissary, you raise the emissary flags one by one and grab the corresponding piles of loot one by one and head to an outpost to sell it one by one. I hate that one by one pot, but money. I do recommend though that you raise the Merchant Alliance Emissary straight away before you even start doing this moneymaker if you're not planning to sell as a Reaper. Even with the gems, the Merchant Emissary tier will be the slowest to level up. So you will need to loot less force to reach tier 5 Emissary with all three trading companies if you start with the Merchant Alliance this way. If you manage to reach the highest tier Emissary with all three trading companies, you will have made as much as you would have had from selling it as a Reaper. But it will take longer as there will be much more travel to do back and forth between the force and an outpost. You can also, if you want to, loot these cranes with barrels for fishes that you can sell to the Hunter's Call. I mean I haven't even, after playing this game quite a lot, leveled up Hunter's Call to the highest level. So this is honestly the best loot on the entire fort. You can also sell the gems to the Hunter's Call instead of the other trading companies, just so you know. And trust me, even if you don't get the emissary multiplier when selling them, it is a worthwhile investment because this is how you otherwise have to level up the Hunter's Call. Oh, it's a big one! A trophy fish! No, oh, oh, I got you now. Well, this is going to make some progress to my hunter's call level. Oh, I, I mean, it's, it's maybe 1% to my next level, at least. Come on! Come on! Oh, it's final title! Let's haul it in! Oh no, it's struggling again! Come here, you little. Oh.
This should be the end of the video, but when I set out to create this video around 10 months ago, I had no idea it would take this long until it was ready. Long story short, 2023 has been one of the worst years of my life. It has been extremely difficult to find energy both for making videos and my other hobbies this year. In 2022, you guys made a dream come true. A dream I've had since I was 11 years old, to become a YouTuber. After the 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours had been reached, I simply couldn't believe that it had that finally happened and I felt I didn't quite know what to do next but I guess the logical next step is to be able to make a living out of this I am however a complete noob at this part of being a youtuber it is brand new for me and I don't know how to proceed I knew already many years ago that ads on YouTube pay very little and have now myself seen that this is true with this channel making about one dollar per thousand views don't get me wrong after making videos for over 10 years for free it is incredible to get money for doing this but it is unfortunately impossible to make a living out of this amount and well if that's possible it would of course be absolutely fantastic I find it extremely difficult to talk about this and this whole part has been deleted and remade a couple of times now but I want to be open and honest with you so that's why it is in this final version with ads alone I don't think this channel could be able to ever reach such a goal however I only know like one or two of these channels that get slightly more than 1 million views per month and that would make around $1,000 which is an amount I could make a living out of if I only buy bare essentials, but I'm very skeptical I could reach such high numbers in the first place. I have found that only quite a small number of different video ideas get recommended by YouTube, and I worry I will run out of interesting video ideas for the algorithm at some point in a not too distant future. And as I said, I'm a noob at this part of YouTube. I have no idea how to get in contact with any sponsor or anything like that. I've tried to get in touch with some, but I've reached a total of zero so far. Anyway, no matter what, I'll always continue making videos, because this is something I love to do. I'll just have to make them slowly unless I can make this work better economically, as I have to put my time elsewhere to make a living. I have enabled super thanks, so if you want to, you could give a tip, and you can possibly soon become a channel member and choose how much, if any, you want to give there. I get 70% of the amount, as YouTube takes 30% of it, but it would help me out greatly in giving me an opportunity to put more time on making videos. Thank you so much for watching this far and all that you have done for me my friends as always it has been an honor